Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Arizona State University's new College of Interdisciplinary Arts and Sciences, Spring Convocation 2020. Sciences, Director Dr. Laura Farry. Associate Dean of Barrett, the Honors College, Dr. Ramsey Eric Ramsey. School of Social and Behavior Sciences Director, Dr. Scott Barclay. School of Humanities, Arts and Cultural Studies Director, Dr. Louis Mendoza. Master of Science and Psychology Director, Dr. Kristen Michelson, Master of Arts and Communication Studies Director, Lindsay Meehan, Master of Science and Forensic Psychology Director, Dr. Nick Schweitzer, Master of Arts and Interdisciplinary Studies Director, Dr. Stefan Stanchez, Master of Arts and Social Justice and Human Rights Director, Dr. Julie Murphy Arfani, and Master of Arts and Social Technologies Director, Dr. Alexander Halavas. Now, please join me in welcoming vocalist, Mr. James Smith, performing our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light was so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming who'd brought stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rockets rang the red, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, 
the star spangled banner yet way oh the land of the free and the home of the brave thank you mr smith it is now my honor to welcome the Vice Provost of ASU's West Campus and Dean of New College of Interdisciplinary Arts and Sciences, Dr. Todd Sandrin. Good morning, Sun Devils, and congratulations, class of 2020. So wherever you are, let's do forks up and cheer loudly if you're ready to graduate. I'm so honored to have the opportunity to congratulate each of you as you graduate today from ASU's New College of interdisciplinary arts and sciences. I've had the privilege of doing so in the past several semesters, but as many of you, all of you know, none of those semesters have been like this one. This time it's different, really different. And not just because we're celebrating now virtually, not a single one of you, anyone you know, is unaffected by the circumstances of the past few months. The ripples of what we've come to know as COVID-19 echo across the entire globe like few events in human history have. And here we are celebrating your incredible accomplishments as you prepare to take your next big, important steps out into the world. But it is not the same world as when you joined ASU or even when you left for spring break in March. I dare say all of us have experienced more change, more adaptation, and more much needed innovation in the last 10 weeks than perhaps in the last 10 years even. Now obviously, all of this change hasn't been good. For families facing new economic hardships, this has been excruciatingly stressful. Given the statistics, it's likely that you know someone already directly affected by the coronavirus, maybe a friend of a friend, or perhaps even maybe right in your own family. Certainly, the impacts, the losses, and the grief are hard to understate, but here you are, ready to take your next big steps into an uncertain world. So what do you do? Do you just stop and wait for the world to get back to the normal we knew just a few months ago? As disruptive and as this pandemic has been, this is certainly though not the first time that we as a nation have lived through periods of profound upheaval and change and challenge. And today, I'd like to share with you a few words of someone quite wiser than me, someone who led our nation through one of its most difficult periods, the Great Depression. Recently, ASU President Michael Crow shared with me and other members of his leadership team the remarks Franklin Delano Roosevelt made during his second term inauguration in 1937. As you know, this was toward the end of the Depression, but the nation was still far from anything resembling a complete recovery. Looking back on some of the progress he led in his first term as president, and looking forward to advancing the prosperity of all the nation, FDR asked, shall we pause now and turn our back upon that road that lies ahead? Shall we call this the promised land, or shall we continue on our way? continue on our way. President Roosevelt's words, continue on our way, for more than 70 years ago resonate with me now, and perhaps they do with you as well. Just a few months ago, we found ourselves thriving in one of the strongest economies our nation has ever known. Do we wait, hoping that that promised land will simply somehow return? Of course not. We will continue on our way. But what is the way forward? What is the solution? Do we merely wait for someone else to figure this out to develop a vaccine or an effective treatment? No, COVID has underscored for all of us the inherently interdisciplinary and complicated space in which solutions to complex problems reside. As we've seen in the past several weeks, COVID is not merely a challenge, a healthcare challenge. It's not merely an economic challenge, a psychological one, a biological and epidemiological problem. It is all of these. But in these same complex intersectional spaces reside real solutions, solutions that have broad, lasting, and far-reaching impacts. And you, as a graduate of ASU New College, are now built, now equipped to thrive in this uncertain environment. For example, I'm sure our psychology majors will have insights into mitigating the mental health toll COVID has created. Our applied math and applied computing majors might develop new models to predict and prevent the spread of COVID. And our interdisciplinary arts and performance majors can find new ways to create and express meaning as families struggle with loss. Our English majors can draft powerful narratives that can communicate the human experience of COVID for generations to come. But in fact, as some of you have heard me say, the single major isn't as important as some think. Instead, 
It's the ways in which you think across disciplines, across majors to develop strategies to solve wickedly complex problems like COVID. We will continue on our way. But this may seem like a tall order, an insurmountable mountain. I suggest, however, that many of you have already leveraged this superpower that we call interdisciplinarity. Many of you have already begun to do this through research experience, through a program perhaps that we call Inquire, through internships and similar experiences, creating both within and just as importantly, outside of the classroom, new approaches, new ideas to begin to solve complex problems facing the world today. To put it simply, You've learned how to learn. And this is perhaps the most valuable skill you'll take with you as you leave ASU to thrive in this rapidly changing world. But learning how to learn, learning how to develop solutions to complex problems that others have deemed impossible to solve, this is not easy. This is real work, real hard work, requiring real time, real energy, and real commitment. And I know that this has not been easy for any of you. In the midst of this life and world-changing experience, you've faced challenges both within and outside of the university. Someone might have even ignorantly told you at some point along your journey that this wasn't somehow meant to be, that you're not college material, whatever that may mean, that you don't belong at a university or that you won't be or somehow cannot be successful or cannot succeed, that you can't be new. But this is a place about being new, a place about creating a future, the future in which you want to live and which you change the world, your family's world, and the world around you. Your newness, as we call it, new college, your success has required you to hold on to hope, to persist, to push through, to be resilient, to employ the raw grit required to succeed. And perhaps most importantly, your family members and close friends have been essential sources of hope and inspiration as well. Without them, many of you would not be here today. And for that reason, wherever you are, let's pause just briefly. And graduates, please reach out and somehow recognize your parents, your families, your friends for their incredible effort and in partnership in giving you hope and inspiration. And of course, you've formed deep and lasting connections with other students and critically important with faculty with whom you've learned, solved problems, and who have given you hope and inspiration. Many of our faculty come from backgrounds not unlike your own, facing and surmounting circumstances that once seemed insurmountable. I know they've given you hope and that you might not be here today without their mentorship, without their support. They're here with us now virtually, and I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the incredible New College faculty for their work with you, our graduates. So what's next? When do you use that superpower, you might ask? Well, for insight and counsel, I again turn to FDR in 1937, who quotes a British poet, and actually a herpetologist as well. Talk about interdisciplinarity. A British poet by the name of O'Shaughnessy, who said, each age is a dream that is dying, or one that is coming to birth. And you graduates, I urge you to let go of what was and focus instead on what you are about to create in the post-COVID world. I have no doubt that the times ahead of us will be challenging, but I have even greater confidence that you, as a new college graduate, your families, your communities, we as a nation, we as a society, we as a university, and we as one world will be stronger on the other side of this. You have used your interdisciplinary superpowers to not only advance a post-COVID set of solutions, you'll be prepared to unleash this superpower on any other challenge that comes your way. But deciding to move ahead is hard to do when there's uncertainty, when there's fear. And FDR even noted that these things sometimes seem to have voices. He notes, many voices are heard when we face a great decision. Comfort says, tarry a while. Opportunism says, this is a good spot. And timidity asks, how difficult is the road ahead? Well, if I ought or it, know anything of the spirit and purpose of our nation, we will not listen to comfort, opportunism, and timidity. We will carry on, FDR said. And that is my advice, my request of each of you today. Don't listen to comfort, opportunism, and timidity. Don't get caught up in fear and worry, and don't listen to anyone who says you're not ready for this. I urge you to embrace your new superpower. Be proud of the new you created by your time in this place that we call ASU New College, and most importantly, fearlessly carry on. Every semester, our convocation committee is given the incredibly difficult task of selecting a single student to speak on behalf of the graduating class. It is now my pleasure to introduce Natalie Alejandro, who is receiving a Bachelor of Science in psychology with a minor in communication. Ms. Alejandro is also a Barrett the Honors College graduate as well. 
Thank you, Dean Sandrin, for your thoughtful words. Welcome to possibly the most unpredictable graduating circumstance you've ever encountered. It's not every day you can say or perhaps even imagine you've attended or have been part of a virtual graduation. I am so honored to be selected by the new College of Interdisciplinary Arts and Sciences in these most trying times to say a few words on behalf of and as encouragement to the class of 2020. The class of 2020 has not only gone through the typical trials of college, but has had to persevere through completing their degrees online and doing so from wherever they find themselves to be. But because ASU is the number one university in innovation, we have afforded the opportunity to confront this adversity head on and have proudly resilient in the face of this completed our degree requirements. Therefore, the class of 2020 has experienced something more and more challenging than others can say they have. It is in ways we never imagined, we've developed a common bond, a bond that links us through the mourning and sorrow we share in not being able to experience our last semester to the fullest, a bond that says it's okay to be interested in the care of the self so that we'll be ready to care for others. A bond that allows us to cry about our loss, but also celebrate our accomplishments because we've worked countless hours to be where we are right now. A bond that allows the new college class of 2020 to say that we were able to persevere through whatever life has thrown at us. Furthermore, I imagine this bond as a portrait from the Mexican painter Frida Kahlo, in which she focuses on the connection of hands and heartstrings. I associate it to the class of 2020 in the sense that in times we expected to be connected, we've been separated, yet we're still together by the bond of hand and heart. Connected by our understanding to grasp the situation and hold on to one another, even if now only metaphorically. Now, in our shared grasping of education and understanding, we have learned to speak from the heart. Who we are and how we define ourselves has been made new through the knowledge that flows in our veins and gives us life. We have made our current and future families proud. For us to continue, I would like to imagine some of the thoughts my classmates would have shared themselves if I wasn't here alone. I imagine them doing this from different places in the world and yet in the spirit of togetherness, being creative and successful in their endeavors. I can imagine them sharing many beautiful memories, words of encouragement, and perhaps a tone of sadness for our time as undergraduate students coming to an end. Ultimately though, you would have heard that we used our creativity and imagination in conditions that demanded of us we be courageous. In times such as these, we must remember that creativity and imagination are all we can depend on. As Ursula Le Guin tells us, the imagination is a fundamental way of thinking an essential means of becoming and remaining human. Therefore, I urge you fellow classmates to continue using your imagination and creativity in your future endeavors. Perhaps we can take courage from the words of the Roman philosopher Seneca who tells us, the greatest obstacle to living is expectancy, which hangs upon tomorrow and loses today. The whole future lies in uncertainty. Live immediately. Indeed, we need these words as our days will be filled with new challenges and we shall meet the future by caring well for the day and can never afford to lose one. Our generation will have to reimagine what reconnection and rebuilding looks like again. The future depends on us to make it because it is not the future if we simply try to reproduce the past. Our educations have taught us we must reflect on the past to change our future but please do not let the negativity of our current situation guide you. Imagine rather the better future we want. We are off to an incredible start as we have succeeded in the midst of a worldwide challenge. New College Class of 2020, despite it all, we did it. Si se pudo y adelante. Thank you. Thank you, Natalie. We will now honor our Outstanding Undergraduate and Graduate Student Award winners, chosen for their academic achievement, innovative research projects, and for their service to the community. The new College Undergraduate Student Award winner is Guillermo J. Ortiz. This week, Guillermo is earning a Bachelor of Science in Environmental Science. While pursuing his degree at New College, Guillermo participated in numerous research projects, published research results in academic papers, 
plus worked in residential housing and volunteered to encourage and assist low-income first-generation students to be successful in the college. Please join me in honoring Guillermo J. Ortiz. Hi, my name is Guillermo Ortiz, and I'm a senior uh, studying environmental science, uh, graduating from New College. Growing up, I grew up on a, on a ranch, so having to take care of animals, having to work outside made me very curious. Coming into ASU, one of the things that I knew about ASU was that it was a big university. And so now it's kind of worried that I'd be sort of uh, left behind. But uh, what surprised me was the, the professors here really put forth an effort to give students a chance to show who they really are. I'm thankful for the mentor that I've had. Dr. Becky Ball, who without, I really can't say that I would see myself in the position that I am right now. I am going to be starting uh, my Environmental Life Sciences PhD. I feel very proud to accomplish this. When I was a little kid, I, I really didn't imagine this for myself. And I can just say that even though I couldn't imagine it then, I'm very happy that it's a reality now. Thank you, Guillermo. We also take great pride in presenting the Outstanding Graduate Student Award to Emily New Line. Emily is earning a Master's of Science in Psychology. Emily's research interests include thought processes that occur during decision making, what makes people confident in their decisions, and how people incorporate contextual information into their beliefs and their actions. Her current research investigates these concepts through the lens of psychology in the legal system. Please join me today in honoring Emily New Line. Hi, my name is Emily Line and I'm graduating with a master's degree in psychology from New College on ASU West Campus. I've always been interested in how people behave and I think that curiosity in just wanting to understand people more is what led me to be interested in psychology. As a new college interdisciplinary student, I've had multiple opportunities to combine a lot of different interests. Um, in addition to my mathematics and psychology interests, I also have a third interest in psychology and law. And so new college was the perfect place for me to be, to be able to combine all of those interests into research projects. I've had the opportunity to build really great relationships with members of my cohort. Um, I think part of the great thing about graduate school, especially at ASU, is that you are constantly busy and that comes with a lot of stress, but I have never felt like I am alone. Having that support has been very great. ASU has really helped me grow into a person who can be assertive and who can encounter new experiences with confidence. And that has been really valuable and I'm sure it will be continue to be valuable in the future. The Dean's Advisory Board unites distinguished individuals whose commitment to excellence spans all areas of New College and transcends academic disciplines. Its members become leaders in shaping the future of the college. They are the voice of the community and they are philanthropic role models contributing generously annually to the Dean's Investment Fund. They are advocates on behalf of New College in their communities and in their organizations. Please join me in recognizing and thanking this extraordinary group of individuals. Many of our New College students have worked tirelessly to major in more than one discipline. These are the students receiving concurrent degrees in this morning's ceremony. <laughs> Arizona State University's oldest continuing honor. It was established in 1901 by Dr. Benjamin B. Moore and Honor Anderson Moore. It is now sponsored annually by the Arizona State University Alumni Association. The award is presented at each commencement ceremony to those individuals who have attained the highest academic standing 
in any four-year curriculum during their undergraduate years at ASU. Please join me in recognizing these new college graduates as recipients of the Moore Award. Welcome Associate Dean of Barrett, the Honors College, Dr. Ramsey, Eric Ramsey. Thank you, Dean Sandrin. Barrett, the Honors College at ASU's West Campus provides talented and motivated students opportunities to excel and enrich their university experiences. Students graduating from Barrett have fulfilled the requisite hours of Honors College coursework and have completed and successfully defended a thesis or creative project. Please join me in recognizing these new college students graduating from Barrett and who have earned their honors medallion. Congratulations. Thank you, Dean Ramsey. It is my pleasure to acknowledge those of you graduating with honors. To graduate cum laude requires a cumulative grade point average of 3.4 to 3.59. These are the new college students graduating with the honor cum laude. To graduate magna cum laude requires a cumulative grade point average of 3.6 to 3.79. These are the new college students graduating magna cum laude. To graduate summa cum laude requires a cumulative grade point average of 3.8 or above. Join me in honoring this year's graduates who have earned the honor summa cum laude. take pride in recognizing current members of the armed services or veterans who are graduating with us this morning. We would like to take this moment to congratulate them on their academic achievements and to thank them for their service. We have the honor of recognizing Dr. Douglas Kelly as this year's college marshal. 
This position is the highest college honor awarded to a member of the faculty at each convocation ceremony. Dr. Kelly is a professor of communication studies in the new College of Interdisciplinary Arts and Sciences and a Lincoln professor of applied ethics. His 1998 study, The Communication of Forgiveness, is the seminal piece of research on the communication of forgiveness and launched two decades of work focusing on various forgiveness processes. Professor Kelly's research has appeared in numerous professional journals, and he is recipient of the 2017 Bernard Bromwell Award for Outstanding Research or Distinguished Service in Family Communication and the Centennial Professor Award at ASU. Dr. Kelly teaches relationship-based courses and conducts workshops in the community on forgiveness and reconciliation, on marital and family communication, conflict processes, relational communication, and inner city families. He also has long-standing relationships with various faith communities and his service learning course, Inner City Families, has placed students in a variety of community organizations for more than a decade. Please join me today in welcoming our newest college marshal, Dr. Douglas Kelly. Let me begin by saying congratulations, class of 2020. These are crazy times, but COVID-19 takes nothing away from all that you have accomplished to be graduating today. In January, none of us could have predicted all that has happened over the last few months. But here we sit and stand together, mediated through technology, yes, but together nonetheless. Not to make you all envious, but I should tell you that I'm the owner of two N95 masks. However, not because I'm hoarding masks to protect me from the coronavirus. Rather, my journey with masks began last July when I was diagnosed with acute myeloid leukemia. To be followed by chemotherapy and a stem cell transplant end of October. I'm recovering well from the transplant, thankfully, and can't express strongly enough how proud I am to speak to you today as part of the ASU and New College community. My intent is not to relay all the ghastly details of my journey, but rather to share with you four elements that have become part of my life since diagnosis and how they have enriched my existence and prepared me for the crazy circumstances in which we all currently live. I offer these as ways to embrace and celebrate your graduation. First, I've learned to ask, who am I? Who am I when after chemo, my straight hair grew back curly? Who am I when more than two months of hospitalization took away my identity through what I do? The pandemic has forced many of us out of our normal routines. We feel lost, disoriented, your college education may have had similar effects. You may be thinking, in many ways, I am no longer the same person who entered university life four years ago. Here, as you are poised to set out on a new segment of your personal journey, it's time to ask, who am I? Second, I've learned to stay alert to new possibilities that are present for me now. When hospitalized, I had some amazing conversations with family, friends, and nurses working the midnight shift. Some of these would never have happened apart from my health crisis. I've been reassessing my teaching and what I'm writing. I'm currently planning to write a piece on my experience wearing a mask in public, which I've been doing since last November. What does it mean to live in a way behind a mask that can make you feel less like a person, a whole human being. That's what many of us have been doing our whole lives. Crisis offers us new eyes with which to see, possibilities that were always there but we couldn't see, and new possibilities that have emerged that we will only see with new eyes. What does this current health calamity offer you that you couldn't see before. 
Maybe you are going to use your new college degree to work in training and development in a large corporation. But now you've decided to create an online mentoring program for first-generation students who are negotiating the crazy world of university just like you did. Or maybe you now have time to try a home business you've dreamed of but didn't think you'd ever have the opportunity or courage to create. When the economy took a nosedive in the 1980s, my uncle's commission-based salary dried up. So he returned to his painting, which he had done in college, and began showing Polaroid pictures of his paintings as he drove state to state selling plastic pipe. The result? Companies weren't buying pipe, but corporate execs were buying paintings. He was able to provide for his family during that time and eventually was pulling in six figures from his paintings alone, doing something he loved. Who are you? What possibilities are there for you to see with new eyes? Third, I've learned to connect, to ask, who are we? At one level, my stem cell transplant has taught me how connected we all are. I have a German man's stem cells rebuilding my immune system. That is crazy. But it's working, and thank God for this generous man. At another level, I've deepened my connection with those I love. When I first came home from hospital after stem cell transplant, I required 24-7 care for 100 days mostly from my wife. We ate together, we played cards together, we walked together, we connected and we pledged not to lose that as my health improved. The COVID crisis has forced us all together, has given us opportunity to serve and enjoy our families and friends and neighbors and students. All of you watching this today are here because of people in your lives who encouraged you, believed in you, provided for you. You have a small window here to take time to strengthen those connections, to reconsider the we in your life. Finally, I've learned to be grateful. To be honest, I've been interested in gratefulness for years, primarily because I thought I took too many things for granted. I tend to take life as it comes, the good and the bad. But the cancer heightened my awareness to the service of my doctors and nurses, the crazy science behind stem cell procedures. If this happened a few years ago, short of a miracle, I could be dead now. I've never appreciated my wife so much, my two sons, both ASU grads, my grandchildren, my friends, in the past, I had seldom appreciated getting cards from others. But now the fact that someone took time to write to me, to think of me, to pray for me, is deeply humbling. That includes the support and kind well wishes I have received from many of you and my colleagues. We don't have to be grateful for bad things. But being grateful for the beautiful things that surround them will change your life. You are graduating at a time when it is almost impossible to go on as usual. I know that's hard. I know it's scary. When I received my diagnosis, it rocked our world. And to this day, we have no guarantees. And there is no way for me to go back to normal. But we, you and I, do have today to ask, who am I? To watch for new possibilities, to connect with others and ask, who are we? To choose gratefulness. Let's take full advantage of the gifts we are being offered in these trying times. Once again, congratulations on all you've accomplished and congratulations for where you are going. Thank you, Dr. Kelly. I just wanna say that a lot of us are pulling for you. You're not in this alone, and it's great to see you again. 
It is now time to recognize our candidates for master's degrees. We will now honor the master's graduates from the new College of Interdisciplinary Arts and Sciences. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Lindsay Meehan, Director of the Master's of Arts degree program in Communication Studies. I'm Lindsay Meehan, the Director of the Master of Arts in Communication Studies. Today, we recognize 17 graduate students earning Master of Arts degrees in Communication Studies from the new College of Interdisciplinary Arts and Sciences. We are so proud of this graduating class and their achievements during this time in our program. We are entering the 20th year of the Master of Arts in Communication Studies. Our program has emphases in both advocacy and social technologies, and our students go on to a variety of careers, industries, and doctoral studies according to their individual interests. But they all graduate with the aim of achieving a positive contribution to the world. We encourage our graduates to follow the sentiments of Gandhi and be the change they want to see in the world. And this group of outstanding graduates is no exception. Each one has made a significant contribution to ASU in a multitude of ways. And we look forward to watching these graduates make a positive contribution to our changing world. Heartfelt congratulations to the class of 2020 from all the faculty who had the honor to work with you. We will miss you. Thank you, Dr. Meehan. Now please welcome Dr. Kristen Michelson, Director of the Masters of Science degree program in Psychology. Hello, I'm Kristen Michelson, Director, Master of Science in Psychology. Today we proudly recognize 54 graduate students earning Master of Science degrees in the discipline of psychology from the new College of Interdisciplinary Arts and Sciences and the School of Social and Behavioral Sciences. The online MS Psychology degree is an intensive program of coursework where students can gain in-depth knowledge on the theories and empirical research in psychology. For our campus-based program, which is celebrating its 10th year, students also gain hands-on experience in research methodology and statistics. Many of our graduates go on to doctoral programs or careers that utilize their psychology knowledge and research skills. I am proud of all the graduates who have worked so hard to accomplish their goals. I want to extend my heartfelt congratulations on behalf of myself and all the psychology faculty for your achievements today. Best of luck in the future. Thank you, Dr. Michelson. Now please welcome Dr. Julie Murphy Irfani, Director of the Masters of Arts degree program in Social Justice and Human Rights. Hello, I'm Julie Murphy Irfani. As director of the Master of Arts in Social Justice and Human Rights, MASJHR program, for the past seven years, I'm thrilled to announce that our program is graduating eight students with a master's degree in social justice and human rights for the spring of 2020. Since its founding 15 years ago, the MASJHR program has attracted truly outstanding graduate students and faculty. Over the years, the program has admitted an exciting array of students from around the United States and the world. On behalf of the SJHR faculty and myself, we are so proud of all the graduates. We offer our sincerest and warmest congratulations to all of our wonderful graduates and wish you all the best for the brightest future. Thank you, Dr. Murphy Afani. Now please welcome Dr. Nick Schweitzer, Director of the Masters of Science degree program in Forensic Psychology. Hi, I'm Nick Schweitzer, Director of the Master of Forensic Psychology and Law and Psychology programs. Today, we are thrilled to recognize 99 graduate students earning Master of Science degrees in Forensic Psychology and Law and Psychology from the new College of Interdisciplinary Arts and Sciences here at ASU. In just three short years, our program has gone from launching to being one of the largest and most respected programs of its kind in the world. And a large part of that is thanks to all of you. We are so proud of all of your accomplishments and impressed with how many of you are using your new skills to launch or advance your careers. 
On behalf of our program's faculty, we wish you the very best of luck. Congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Schweitzer. Now please welcome Dr. Stefan Stanchev, Director of the Master of Arts degree program in Interdisciplinary Studies. Hello, I'm Stefan Stanchev, Director of the Master of Arts in Interdisciplinary Studies program in the new College of Interdisciplinary Arts and Sciences. Today, we proudly recognize eight graduate students earning their MA degrees. The MA in Interdisciplinary Studies is an innovative and flexible degree program designed for students who wish to pursue a distinctive educational experience by combining the study of two or more disciplines. Established on the principle that solving problems and producing knowledge in the 21st century requires crossing disciplinary boundaries, the program provides exposure to a variety of research methods, historical perspectives, and modes of inquiry. Our students include school teachers, professionals in the corporate and nonprofit sectors, federal employees, aspiring scholars who want to prepare for doctoral study, as well as individuals who desire personal enrichment in the humanities and the social sciences. The Mays program faculty offers their heartfelt congratulations for completing this challenging course of study and wishes you success in your future exploits. Thank you, Dr. Stanchev. Now please welcome Dr. Alexander Halavas, Director of the Master of Arts degree program in Social Technologies. Hello, I'm Alex Halave, Director of the Critical Data Studies programs. Today, we proudly recognize seven graduates of the Master in Arts in Social Technologies program offered by the new College of Interdisciplinary Arts and Sciences. This is a difficult time for everyone. It's a difficult time to be graduating, but perhaps no one is better prepared than our graduates who've spent the last couple of years uh, becoming experts in how we interact online and how we work and how we use data and technologies to do those things better. In fact, a couple of our graduates I know have landed new jobs, which given today's market is no small feat, and others are moving on to their doctoral studies. Very proud of the work that you have done to earn your degrees, and you have definitely earned those degrees. I only wish I was there to hood you in person. Congratulations to all of you. Congratulations to our newest master's degree recipients. It is now time to recognize graduates receiving bachelor's degrees from the new College of Interdisciplinary Arts and Sciences. Please welcome the director of the School of Humanities, Arts, and Cultural Studies, Dr. Luis Mendoza. Hello, I'm Luis Mendoza, Director of the School of Humanities, Arts, and Cultural Studies, also known as SHARPS. Today, we proudly recognize 10 students earning baccalaureate degrees across 10 disciplines in SHARPS and the new College of Interdisciplinary Arts and Sciences. In the School of Humanities, Arts, and Cultural Studies, students learn to think critically about the human experience and communicate effectively while working within, outside, and across the boundaries of traditional liberal arts disciplines. With a degree from Sharks, students learn to problem solve, research, write persuasively, and create. These are powerful, life-enriching, and eminently practical skills that make you the perfect candidate for jobs that have yet to be imagined. I'm always proud of our graduates. But this semester, I'm particularly proud of students for persevering through these difficult and unprecedented times to stay focused and complete their studies under such adverse conditions that none of us foresaw in January. Graduates in humanities, arts, and cultural studies take jobs in nonprofits, become educators, work in a museum or art gallery, or become independent artists. They pursue graduate school, start their own businesses, become research or policy analysts, or community leaders, among other exciting and impactful careers. You make the world a better place. On behalf of all the faculty in the School of Humanities, Arts, and Cultural Studies, I want to say how proud we are of each and every one of you and how much we wish you the very best in the near and distant future. We extend our most sincere and heartfelt congratulations to you and your family for reaching this important milestone. The future is in your very capable hands, 
and we're counting on you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mendoza. Please welcome the Associate Dean and Director of the School of Mathematical and Natural Sciences, Dr. Laura Ferry. Hello, my name is Dr. Laura Ferry. I'm the Associate Dean of Research and Strategic Initiatives for New College, and I'm currently the Interim Director for the School of Mathematical and Natural Sciences. In my role as Interim Director, I'm so pleased to be here today to share with you in your accomplishments as you graduate from the School of Mathematical and Natural Sciences and the New College. Our school offers degrees and certificates in applied computing, applied cybersecurity, applied mathematics, biomedical research, biology, biotechnology and bioenterprise, computational forensics, data science, environmental science, forensic science, pharmacology and toxicology, and statistics. Today, we proudly recognize 127 graduates earning baccalaureate degrees from our school across these diverse disciplines. I know that our time together at ASU has been punctuated abruptly by the COVID virus and actions taken to keep you all as safe as possible. It certainly has been different, but our collective experience during this, during this time serves only to emphasize that you are able to face challenges, you are resilient, and you are able to achieve your hopes and dreams even when previously unimaginable events come your way. Your graduation experience, more than most, will be truly unforgettable, but I know you will go on to do great things. Congratulations, graduates. Thank you, Dr. Ferry. Please welcome the Director of the School of Social and Behavior Sciences, Dr. Scott Barclay. Hello, I am Scott Barclay, Director of the School of Social and Behavioral Sciences. Today, we proudly recognize the 466 students earning baccalaureate degrees from across 11 disciplines represented in the School of Social and Behavioral Sciences at the New College of Interdisciplinary Arts and Sciences. Graduates from the School of Social and Behavioral Sciences are at the forefront of better understanding the role of individuals, communities, and nations in shaping the world around them. A helpful skill to possess in normal times, but certainly more so in this complex economic moment. The school offers degrees in communication, political science, psychology, forensic psychology, social and behavioral sciences, social justice and human rights, and sociology. The faculty of our school are always proud and delighted to see each of our graduates complete their degrees. But this current class has shown so much courage and perseverance that we feel truly honored to be part of your journey. It is with joy that we congratulate you today on your accomplishments. <laughs> Congratulations, New College Class of 2020. May you always be new, ready for the next challenge, ready to carry on, and a Sun Devil, ready to change the world. Congratulations, Sun Devils. Just a note before we go. Every spring graduate of the New College of Interdisciplinary Arts and Sciences is listed below on this page. We invite you to scroll through to see the names Photos and words of loved ones, classmates, honorees, and scholars. Now, wherever you are across Arizona or around the world, we invite you to stand. That's right, stand up right now. We are all going to do something together in unison to honor all of our graduates. Please join hands with those within reach Follow along on the screen and let's sing. Let's sing so loud your neighbors will hear. Get ready now for your Arizona State University alma mater.